It's mail time. It's time to find out what's cracking with the commoners. Mail time. The commodores, the commoners. Let's get the first one. Here we go. DeAndre Hopkins to the Titans. Big deal, little deal, no deal. Oh, this is a deal, Tony, but it's a deal specific to the context of the Titans because the Titans have the worst wide receiver room in all of the NFL, and they are a really dismal team as a result of that. So to me, DeAndre Hopkins makes this decision. I'm going to go to a place where I'm probably not going to win as much as I could if I went to, say, I don't know, New England even, but in Tennessee, he's going to matter. And so it's a deal insofar as a team that refuses to tank, refuses to rebuild, gets a guy to be the number one receiver for a rookie quarterback in Will Levis. That's a good fit for DeAndre Hopkins specifically. I think it actually could be a big deal uh, along the lines of what you're saying. I think last year, Tennessee and Baltimore had the worst wide receiving cores in all of football among teams that you would have thought were pretty good. If I have this correct, the leading touchdown receiver on Tennessee – had four touchdowns, and he was a running back. He wasn't even a wide receiver. So you look at Ryan Tannehill, who's had progressively bad seasons. He went from 33 touchdown passes to 21 to 13. And you say, does he have anything left? And does Hopkins, at 31 years old in his 11th season, does he have anything left? Because if they do, and you've got Derrick Henry, the Titans could be back to where they were, say, two or three years ago. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I did hear this, that when Hopkins was really good in Houston, Tim Kelly, I believe his name was, was the play caller, uh, and, and Mike Vrabel mm-hmm. was on that staff as a coordinator. They're both on Tennessee. Yep, remembers them. So maybe, yep. maybe, maybe that that's argues uh-huh. well. Maybe. I don't know. Here's the next one. This is a long one. Auger. Lionel Messi was introduced to 18,000 fans in the rain in Miami last night. What should MLS and Inter-Miami expect out of Messi? They should expect a folk hero. Tony, the whole promise of Leo Messi, who is not yet 40, coming over to America and showing up at a Publix and blending in unlike he ever has been able to do anywhere else on this planet, is that there is a folk hero aspect to this. And now we just got to watch him play on the worst team in MLS. Inter-Miami is dead last. So as long as Leo Messi can be anything like the Leo Messi we have seen before everywhere else, this has a giant success written all over it because the bar is incredibly low. Yeah, so I mean, I think the first thing that MLS and Inter Miami should expect is to sell a lot of tickets. Every single place he goes will be sold out. Everybody wants to see him. My question is, as someone who saw Pelé come over and and all of those people when the North American Soccer League was going around grabbing people like Cruyff and Canalia. Mm-hmm. You know, my question is, he's 36 years old, I believe, Messi, in a sport where all you do is run all the time. I don't know if he has any particular regard for United States soccer. I don't know why he would. He's played on a yeah, lot higher levels than, than <laughs> that. They apparently went and got a coach that he likes, and they're going to bring some of the players he played with. And so to make the basketball analogy, it sort of has that LeBron to the Lakers feel, you know, where they Mm. gather a whole lot of people that LeBron knew at various stages in his career. Yeah, so, I mean, I I think for two years it'll be fun to watch. I don't have any particular expectations that they're going to be good because apparently they are stinkingly bad now, right? I mean, is he going to transform them? think and the offense the way they play soccer in america the way we play soccer here in america it should be disgusting to leo messi leo messi loves <laughs> he likes to orchestrate and we like to run up and down back and forth like our heads are cut off so as long as he likes yeah. it i think that'll be a win enough email let's take one last break still to come aaron Rodgers sounds upset about the jets being on hard knocks really and is joel Embiid? joel Embiid, tony is he open to leave he's your boy He's your process boy. What do you the think? Toughest, the toughest, large adult son I ever had. Joel Embiid. I, would, I'm already mad. I'm already mad. Maybe he could story. go to Inter Miami as well. Tonight on Sports Center at 6 Eastern. What's next for Saquon Barkley and the Giants after failing to sign a new long term deal today? Plus, what missing out on DeAndre Hopkins means for Mac Jones' development with the Patriots? And what to expect from Brian Kelly's second season leading LSU? We're live at SEC Media Days, Sports Center, 6 Eastern on ESPN.
Happy time, people. Happy 18th birthday, Connor Bedard. The hockey phenom and number one overall draft pick by the Chicago Blackhawks comes into the NHL with the same kind of credentials and excitement that Victor Wembanyama brings to the NBA. Bedard had 71 goals and 72 assists this past season in just 57 games in Canada's Western Hockey League. In the 2023 World Junior Tournament, Bedard led Canada to the gold medal with nine goals and 14 assists in just seven games. The night the Blackhawks took him number one, Bedard said, quote, I want to have an impact on the ice and in the room to be a teammate and give my all every day, unquote. Tony, the headlines are saying that this is the LeBron James of hockey, and to him and Victor Wembanyama, I just say, psychology. We praised Alcaraz's psychology earlier. Psychology is as important when you get that level of hype. And by the way, I guess the other piece of advice is if Britney Spears tries to reach out to you and touch you, maybe have your security guard, you know, take a little easy on her next time you're in Vegas. <laughs> Good reference. Happy anniversary, Deion Sanders. On this day 33 years ago, while playing with the Yankees, the baseball and football star drilled a liner to center field that got past the diving baseball and football star, Bo Jackson. The ball rolled all the way to the Yankee Stadium wall and primetime never hesitated. He took a wide turnaround third, made an acrobatic leap to touch home plate, missing it initially, then going back and touching it just before the Kansas City catcher put the tag on him. Sanders had 39 career homers, three of which were these inside the park jobs. Willie Wilson, though, had 12 of his career 41 this way. But that magical summer of 1990, when both Dion and Bo Jackson were both playing baseball and football, and it looked like they would just be at each other's throats for the entire year in both sports, it was so glorious. And then, of course, Bo Jackson gets hurt in 1991, and yeah. it's never as good as it was in that play we just showed. I'm surprised you haven't asked both of them to play golf after the Steph Curry <laughs> situation. Happy like trails to, to extensions for Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs by today's franchise tag deadline. Barkley failed to reach an agreement with the Giants and Jacobs with the Raiders. Yahoo reports that the two are preparing to sit out portions of training camp rather than report under the terms of the franchise tag, which for running backs is just over $10 million this season. These two put up huge numbers last season, but running back is a brutal position and often a replaceable one, so teams are reluctant to devote big, long-term dollars to it. Because Barkley and Jacobs have not signed the tag, they cannot be fined for missing camp, which starts in eight days for both teams. Yeah, Tony, typically the nerd take is to declare how this is economically the right choice, but I just want to point out how tough it is, how horrible it is for Josh Jacobs to lead the NFL in rushing yards and yards from scrimmage and for Saquon Barkley to be as essential as he obviously is to his team in a contract year, essentially, and to get nothing for it because, yes, the economy is that way. It's just, just unfortunate time to be running back. It's remarkable to me. I mean, obviously, there must be some sort of analytics that say running backs do are... don't matter. The yardage that they've gotten... How can so they good. not matter, right? How can they not yeah. matter? We're running out of show when we go to the big finish. Your boy Joel Embiid said, quote, yeah. I just want to win a championship. I don't know where that's going to be, whether it's in Philly or anywhere else, unquote. So read the tea leaves for us. Yeah, the tea leaves look like a giant middle finger made of tea leaves. Shohei Otani yeah. hit his 34th homer and is on pace for 58. Your thoughts? He's so great. I wonder where he's going to be playing August 1st. Yankees first baseman Anthony Rizzo has gone a career record 164 straight plate appearances without a home run. That's cause for concern, no? It is. It also, I hope that Shohei Otani comes to the Yankees to alleviate that cause for concern. But regarding the Jets being on hard knocks, Aaron Rodgers told KPIX, quote, they forced it down our throats and we got to live with it, end quote. Be sympathetic to that. No, he's going to be the greatest quote ever on that show, and then he'll call McAfee up and tell him all the bad stuff about the show. <laughs> Last one, Summer League final tonight, Rockets and Cavs. Are you intrigued? I kind of am. Amoni Bates has been amazing for the Cavs. I want to watch him, actually. Watch it for me, too, okay? We're out of I time. Will. We'll try and do better the next time. Uh, ben and Terry Lynn, shout out. Ooh, and I'm Pablo Torre. Will Bond's back tomorrow, don't worry. But go to www.pablo.show for more of this guy. But for now... Your sports center. Look what we got. We got the Pablo show. Yes.